Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. words that we input and the result from each computer is coming to one machine which is doing the final aggregation. This is how we are doing the work now and this is working fine uh, because uh, we can store the current data in this in this file system because current data is not huge. But the problem arises because of uh, certain factors. Now let's see what those factors are. One, the, the data is stored in a different place in our underlying database system. And the data has to be pulled, data has to be pulled from there by the program and and has to be worked on by the individual programs that are running um, simultaneously in parallel. So pulling the data through the network is going to take up time and it's also going to eat up the bandwidth and it's going to make the system slow. So that's problem number one. So Problem number one is slow. It's going to take time to, to pull the data in order to work on it. Second problem would be that all these uh, computers which are running in parallel working on the data set, they are going to send the result to one computer. And that computer has to do a lot of work. Now, what if the, the output from each individual um, computers um, that are working on the data, the results from that, if that is very big, so big that this computer cannot handle it, then we have a problem. Also, if this machine fails, the one that, which is doing the aggregation, if that fails, then the, the entire result is, is lost. There's a lot of dependency on this. So the new system that we had to come up with in order to use the big data had to solve those problems. And so Hadoop was made to solve these problems. So here in this um, chart, I have um, listed down the major challenges that we, are, we had been facing and how Hadoop has solved those. And that's why Hadoop has become popular. We'll come to that later though. Now the first thing that, the first challenge that Hadoop, I mean, the first challenge that the traditional um, 
systems were facing is that the, uh, the size of the file was huge. The size of the data file was huge. And we had to store those data files. Remember, I said we are, we are making, we are creating um, data at the rate of about 30,000 uh, gigabytes per second. So the data file that we had to store, the companies wanted those data, and so we had to store them. And there is no way of doing it right now. So what Hadoop did was pretty smart. They didn't keep the data in one place. They distributed the data. They split the data into multiple bits, multiple packets. And they also made it fault tolerant by replicating the data, making sure that no bit was lost, no split was lost. And that is done by the part of um, Hadoop, which is called as the Hadoop file system. The file system stores the data in it, but it stores it in a distributed and replicated way. So there, come, there is um, one problem solved. Second one, in order to, when we were trying to store the, the incoming data, what we were trying to do in the traditional system was that we were trying to um, add memory upon memory and trying to make our computers um, more powerful so that they could store the incoming data. Of course, that had a uh, limitation that um, the computer's motherboard had to um, permit that. Um, but we kept on increasing it as, as long as it was permitted by the, by the design of the computer motherboard. And but that was becoming very costly. As we had to keep on increasing the memory, it was becoming very costly. But by the time Hadoop came up, the hardware companies had actually made up um, optical disk-based hard disks, which were cheap. And multiple of those computers using those type of disks would be, uh, started being used in Hadoop clusters. These were actually called commodity hardwares. commodity computers. Okay? So economic, optical, disk-based hard disks started to be used. And of course, it has to be cheap if you have to keep all those data, but we have to pay a huge price for it, then the companies don't want to do that. They want it cheap, right? So Hadoop became an economical um, solution uh, to their need. And so it was accepted. Third problem that the traditional systems were facing was, the, was that the critical final aggregation had to be done on a single machine. Remember the single machine that I was uh, ta talking about? The one that did the aggregation uh, from, from the other machines which were running the program? That final aggregation uh, was dependent on the single machine. Hadoop found out a way to overcome that too. It distributed the computing. Not only did it distribute the data like we were talking earlier, it distributed the computing. So the, so the, the, the program started running in parallel over multiple computers. So that way, uh, we didn't have to depend on one single, uh, depend, one single machine. Lastly, high volume of data had to be transported from the file servers to the computer that was doing the computation on the data. So data, like I was saying earlier, the data had to be moved from there from the file systems to the computer. And that was taking up time, that was eating up bandwidth, causing a lot of problem, and making the system slow. Hadoop came up with a solution for that too. 
what did it do? What it did was very, very smart. It didn't pull the data to the task like uh, it was being done uh, by the traditional systems. It moved the task, which was smaller, to the place where the data resides. Data was kept and it remained and never moved from the uh, computers where it was stored. So that is what is called as data locality in Hadoop. Hadoop promoted data locality. Data remained in that, in that exact locale and the task which was going to work on the data moved there. That made it faster. To work on that amount of data, it became faster. And so now you see, we have a system, we came up with a system, Hadoop came up with a system that can solve our problems of doing some kind of math on the huge data that we are generating now. So what exactly is the formal definition of Hadoop? Sorry. Hadoop is an open source computing framework that supports the processing of large data sets like we have today in a distributed computing environment. It has a reliable, fault tolerant, distributed file system and high volume of data can be processed with ease by using parallel computing. Its MapReduce development infrastructure enables us to read, write, and perform basic aggregation-like operation on the stored data in batches. Now, what does this all mean? Saying this in, in simple terms, Hadoop is an open source computing framework. Okay, so it's open source. Anybody can work on it and contribute to it. It's a computing framework. We can do math on the data, okay, that supports processing of large data sets. We can work on large data sets using Hadoop. And the, wor the way it works is that it distributes the computing environment, meaning it distributes the, the work is distributed among different machines. It has a reliable fault tolerant file system, distributed file system. That is what is called as the HDFS like I said earlier. So Hadoop's file system is reliable because data is never lost. It's fault tolerant because it replicates and it uh, handles high volume of data. And it's MapReduce infrastructure helps in um, doing the computation on the data. It helps us enable read, write, and perform basic aggregation, as the sentence says. So these two are the underlying two technologies related to Hadoop. Now, parallel computing is a, is a basic underlying thing in Hadoop. Now, parallel computing is not uh, anything new to us. We always um, uh, use parallel computing in our uh, daily lives. Uh, for example, um, uh, the, in factories, uh, in the assembly lines of factories, people work in parallel to complete a job. At home, if you want to clean our, our house, for example, and everybody, if every member of the family works together and work in parallel, they, um, they get the job done faster, right? Now, I want to draw your attention to, um, to one particular example that I'm uh, fond of, uh, which is, give me a minute.
um, which uh, which ta which is about um, the voting system that our uh, society has. Um, and I choose this example simply because um, um, it's very easy to understand MapReduce because MapReduce works exactly the same way. Our voting system is a classic example of parallel computing. Now, if you um, let's say candidates A, B, and C um, are running the election. Now, when it's time to vote, different people go to different um, polling booths. and cast their um, vote there. And voting uh, happens concurrently, simultaneously on all the polling booths. When, time, when, when the polling time is, voting time is up, um, the, the polling officer or whoever um, counts the vote, he or she counts the vote um, given to candidates A, B, and C on each polling booth. So you have polling officer working on the first booth, polling officer working on the second booth, polling officer working on the third booth simultaneously, and they count the number of votes that candidate A got, candidate B got, and candidate C got. And they they declare a result and say that candidate A has this many votes, candidate B has this many votes, and candidate C has that many votes. Now this happens simultaneously in multiple states. And when all the states have uh, um, gone through their voting process, then they, then they aggregate all the um, vote that candidate A got from state 1, 2, 3, and so on. Candidate B has got from state 1, 2, 3, and so on. And candidate C has got from states 1, 2, 3, and so on. And finally, they do the aggregation and come out and uh, find out what is the total amount of vote that candidate A has got, candidate B has got, and candidate C has got. And based on that, the, they decide who is going to be the head of the state. That's exactly how um, Hadoop works as well. Let me erase this. Give me a minute. Now, in in Hadoop, uh, you'll have, there would be a client who would be. Uh, submitting a job and it would go to um, the Hadoop system. One would be the name node server which takes care of the data and which has multiple uh, nodes under it. And and it the, these actually store the uh, data in it. This is the this is the part where the data is taken care of. The name node and the data nodes take care of the data part. And there is also the the computer which takes part which takes care of the computation on the data. Um, which takes care of the job called the task, task tracker. That's the uh, main computer, which also has um, um, multiple nodes under it. Because remember, the job is also distributed in, in Hadoop. Not only is the data distributed, the job is also distributed in Hadoop. And that is taken care of the task by the task tracker. Um, and it has multiple nodes underneath it.
uh, this, this one is the job tracker and these are the task trackers. Okay, so as you can see, this Hadoop, in Hadoop, the data is split into smaller parts that is done by this server and is stored in multiple com computers. Those are those servers, those machines. And then the job is run on each of these computers in parallel. And that is happening on the side of the, of the picture where uh, the job tracker is taking up the function of splitting the job and then um, the job is run in parallel in these uh, machines that you see down here and as a result from the final um, the final result is, uh, is sent back at, to the job tracker and send and the client can see can see it Now, you'll wonder why, why Hadoop is so, so popular. As you can see, Hadoop has actually overcome all the problems that our uh, initial traditional uh, systems were facing. And that is why uh, there is so much demand for Hadoop these days. Because most companies are moving towards Hadoop-based solutions these days, the number of jobs related to Hadoop is on the rise. And that is why learning Hadoop is going to benefit you. Now these are the job openings um, that you that you often see in the job market for related to Hadoop. Uh, they ask for Hadoop admin engineers. They are the people who administer Hadoop. They take care of the cluster. The, how, how many, uh, I mean, if, if anything goes wrong with the cluster, if any um, commodity uh, hardware, any commodity uh, computer were to die or crash, uh, they would replace it, change it, and make sure that everything goes on smoothly, there'll be no downtime, and so on. So that's the Hadoop administrator. The Hadoop development engineer is the one who programs, who does computation on the data that is stored in there. So he should be the one who should know uh, uh, programming languages like Java. They, sh they should be able to use SQL on the data uh, or, and some scripting language. Um, and some related technologies uh, like Hive, HBase, uh, Pig, and all that would help him accelerate in his career. The Haru Big Data Architect is responsible for the actual planning and implementation of all Hadoop-based solutions. So he is like the mastermind. He decides um, which uh, technology to use, um, how, to, uh, how to find a solution for the problem that the company is trying to, how to use, how to, how to integrate uh, Hadoop and find the solution. Basically, that's what his work is. Data scientists work mainly on the data. Their work is, is how to read the data from, from uh, Hadoop file system and figure out solutions to it. Now the course that we will be offering will touch base with all these, kind, all these um, positions and you can um, decide which one you would like to 
apply based on your um, interest and skill. Now, as you, you may be aware, that it is uh, big data is uh, hot, is currently very hot in the job market, and the their um, it's expected to grow to about 14 billion by uh, 2017. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to actually show you some of the. Um, some of the the jobs that are currently available in the in the market. Uh, let's go to uh, my um, web web browser. Okay, here we have uh, Indeed.com. And uh, if I just put in Hadoop over there and ask them to find the number of jobs, you'll see that there are uh, over 8,000 jobs um, in the Hadoop area worldwide. And then if you look, scroll down, you'll see the different um, types of positions. Okay, now let's move and let's see another one. Uh, this is usarecruit.net. If I type in, same way, if I type in Hadoop and ask them to find the number of jobs available, uh, again, they'll come up, they come up with 8,586 jobs. Now, Simply Hired, if I do the same, I'm just trying to show you the number of jobs available in the market these days. They come up with a number that's almost double, 16,194 Hadoop jobs in the market. So what I'm trying to tell you is that um, what I'm trying to tell you is that the the, the requirement is huge. There are uh, not so many people in the market who are experts in this field. So people are scramming, people are learning, and this is actually a very good time to switch your field and jump into this um, area. Here again I have um, some other names um, for uh, job searching sites and on the right side I have some um, names of companies which are looking for um, how to people. Now let's talk about our syllabus. To attain um, attain proficiency in this area, we have made a very uh, elaborate course. Um, we are trying to uh, keep our course to around 30 hours, um, including some mock interviews in it and some group group discussions with review of. Um, uh, resume and all that. We'll be providing um, basic Java and Unix introductory courses for people who are not very uh, confident on those So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com On our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. 
Also, if you are interested in a demo program, please register on our home page on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770 Seven 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 one two six nine. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at zero two zero three three seven one seven six one five. You can also email us at training at h two k infosys dot com or h two k infosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.